from my point of view, uh, it's, we're discussing about a global issue. It's something that affects swine production all over the world. And uh, awareness is the, the key word and prevention is another key word towards mycotoxins. Uh, and uh, I hope I have um, the ability here to uh, discuss a little bit over these two uh, significant points. As regards to which mycotoxins we are uh, most um, likely, we'll see most likely in our feeds, we're discussing about aflatoxins, which is a well-known uh, uh, group of mycotoxins, B1, B2, G1, and G2. Uh, as we got pigs, uh, okra toxins, may predominantly okra toxin A, and um, T2 toxin is also uh, important, and of course, major three fusarium toxins. Welcome to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine nutrition research digested for you. I'm your host, Clayton Chastain. And today we have with us Dr. Panayiotis Tassis, an Associate Professor of Swine Medicine and Reproduction at the School of Veterinary Medicine of Aristotle University, Thessaloniki, Greece. So Panayiotis, before we begin, would you mind giving the audience a short introduction about yourself? So thank you very much for the invitation. Very, very pleased, very nice to be here with you. Uh, uh, a few words about me. I am uh, now uh, appointed as an Associate Professor in the Aristotle University of Thessaloniki in the School of Veterinary Medicine, focusing on swine medicine and uh, reproduction. And my main uh, research field uh, is mycotoxins and their effects uh, either alone or uh, in mixtures uh, to swine health and uh, reproductive parameters. So all in all, in the last uh, 20 years, let's say, I'm uh, very much focused on this uh, issue, uh, working on it. Kemen calls all swine experts. You already know the key to a profitable swine operation is healthy, productive pigs. Our team of swine experts are driven by curiosity to create science-backed ingredients and solutions that help you maintain feed and water quality, improve intestinal health, optimize nutrition, and eliminate pathogens. Learn more today by diving in at kemen.com forward slash swine. Gotcha. So yeah, I was looking at some of the research that you've done with mycotoxins, and it seems you've done a little bit of research um, on all sorts of different mycotoxins. So I don't have a particular one that I want to dive into first, but I guess just kind of to start us off, what all has your research shown and what mycotoxins have you seen have been some of the, the most harmful to pig production? Well, from my point of view, uh, it's, we're discussing about a global issue. It's something that affects swine production all over the world. And uh, awareness is the, the key word, and prevention is another key word towards mycotoxins. Uh, and uh, I hope I have um, the ability here to uh, discuss a little bit over these two uh, significant points. As regards to which mycotoxins we are uh, most um, likely, we'll see most likely in our feeds, we're discussing about aflatoxins, which is a well-known uh, uh, group of mycotoxins, B1, B2, G1, and G2. Uh, as we got pigs, uh, okra toxins, may predominantly okra toxin A, and um, T2 toxin is also uh, important. And of course, the major three fusarium toxins, uh, DON, deoxynvalenol, xeralenone, and the fumonisins uh, uh, from fusarium uh, mycotoxins group. So um, these are more or less six uh, uh, major mycotoxins which affect our swine, swine production uh, globally. And uh, at first, we should uh, focus on these ones. Yes, and I've heard of all those uh, different types of mycotoxins. But here in the, the U.S., at least, you typically, when doing research, hear about fumonisin, um, deoxin of alanol, and zeralinone. So um, when looking at different types of uh, mycotoxins, are there particular areas of the world where some mycotoxins are more prevalent than others? Yes, absolutely. There are these uh, uh, yearly, you can see, you can find online these uh, yearly databases and you see that there is, there's a specific pattern for every year and there are some issues in Southeast Asia, let's say, which are quite different from uh, Europe or from Oceania. So we must be aware of all of these uh, mycotoxins. Of course, the three fumar fusarium uh, mycotoxins uh, Fusarium originated mycotoxins, these uh, secondary metabolites of the, the metabolism of uh, the fungus. Uh, they are um, 
the main ones that we observe also here in Europe and in the States, uh, as I've seen in these databases. And uh, I must say that the issue is not each mycotoxin alone, but they are co-occurrence, they are concurrent present in, in feed. And these three ones are the most frequently observed as mycotoxin mixers in feed. So we have to uh, tackle, have to mitigate uh, mycotoxin mixtures nowadays in different parts of the world and different mixtures that we can observe. Gotcha. So when looking at these mycotoxins, and I know it might uh, differ depending on which one you're looking at, but what are some of the typical clinical symptoms that you see within different stages of production? The issue of mycotoxins, of course, we have acute cases which are not very, very often now, uh, nowadays in intensive shrine farming, and at least in the European uh, air, area. And uh, we, use, we see a lot of these um, chronic cases with uh, low concentration uh, levels, low contamination levels for a long time uh, periods, which can result in, in fact, symptoms, not clear clinical symptoms. So we must be we have this this high awareness level that mycotoxins can uh, mix with other uh, issues that we see on farm, and we uh, this result in clinical symptoms of uh, uh, various organs and uh, tissues. So uh, we've seen a lot of uh, also at the research level or in our experimental stations we've seen typical reproductive symptoms uh, from. Uh, this is a known point of view, uh, just not general known, and uh, also cases of splay leg piglets and um, uh, gastric uh, and intestinal, gastrointestinal uh, pathological situations in terms of uh, anorexia, of uh, have high levels of DON. And uh, for monocin cases, we need uh, higher concentrations to see uh, significant clinical signs, but they are always. They can always be around there in our feed and uh, affecting our immune system, the, the swine, immune, swine immune system, and uh, working together with uh, the other mycotoxins. Uh, as regards aflatoxins, also uh, we can see a few issues in the um, in gastrointestinal tract, digestive system. Uh, to be honest, uh, liver is also highly targeted from these mycotoxins, and uh, the kidneys targeted for as regards uh, oflatoxin A. Um, finally, for T2, 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 T2 toxin, uh, cases are rare here in, uh, in Europe, in the, the east side of Europe, and um, signs are a bit uh, vague also and not very clear. So we should focus on the digestive system, the uh, immune system, and the reproductive system as major endpoints as major uh, targets of these uh, mycotoxins, either from a clinical aspect and also at the experimental uh, level. We've done some work previously as regards, uh, for example, boar semen and the effects of DON and xeralone on boar semen. And uh, uh, we, we saw there are separate effects, the effects when they work uh, alone and there are the differences when they have this... Uh, synergism or um, additive effects when they work together, even at the, even at the boar semen level. So we must be aware also from the sow's perspective in the production and also from the boar's perspective in the production. And then, so my final question for you. So when talking about um, like full-blown mycotox mycotoxicosis, um, when it comes to diagnosing that and looking for different counteracting measures, um, what are some things that farmers and veterinarians should keep in mind when trying to diagnose that that is an issue within the, the feed and then trying to counteract that and fight against that? Yes, that, that, that's, I, I guess, it's, it's the most, probably the most important part from a veterinary clinician, uh, from the person who will uh, have to mitigate these symptoms. So, first of all, we need proper sampling. And we need it in terms of preparing our samples correctly based on uh, EU regulations or appropriate authorities regulations. So, and on the other hand, it has to be uh, timely prepared. So well prepared uh, and uh, at that spot when the issue occurs. The usual problem that we have is that from the time that the contaminated feed reaches our farm until we find and 
conclude that we are discussing about mycotoxins, sometimes there is a time difference and we might lose this timely uh, sampling uh, preparation. So first of all, we have to be aware of the issue. We have to be aware of what we are facing. There are also some other issues like emerging mycotoxins, mask toxins, uh, but we have at least be able to um, target on these fair, the six ones that I discussed before and then also for the, the others that are working uh, together with these major mycotoxins. So uh, we prepare our samples on time and um, feed samples on time and um, correctly. We uh, are able to connect our challenges, our uh, not so, uh, changes that we have in feed with clinical symptoms. So we have to be able during our diagnostic approach, either with biological samplers or um, from a clinical examination of the animal, we have to be able to connect these issues and uh, be um, one step forward and um, correctly also receive samples from animals wherever, whenever it's uh, needed. Uh, finally, we have to be able to have in contact with uh, a lab that has the ability to give us uh, proper and uh, fast and accurate results using uh, liquid chromatography and um, uh, techniques that are updated and um, uh, quick uh, in our hands so that we will be, we will be able to mitigate uh, this problem. Uh, I don't want to be very long, but as regards mitigation, we've seen uh, cases here and we've uh, experimented on various um, uh, products working at the market, the swine right market so far, and we see uh, ability of the, some of these towards some mycotoxins and, you know, the stereochemical, the, the chemical properties and the toxicokinetics of the toxin, these toxins are different. So the producers and the veterinarians should be um, focused and understand that we don't have one product for every toxin that works for everything. So we have to find our enemy, which toxins are we facing, and then select the proper uh, biotransformating product or absorbing product or most probably mixtures of adsor absorbing products in one uh, substance, in one uh, of absorbing, excuse me, mixtures of absorbing um, substances in one product that uh, work uh, better towards the specific toxins that we are facing in our feed. So all in all, uh, be prepared, be aware, proper sampling, uh, proper um, um, laboratory techniques and uh, uh, the adequate uh, mitigating uh, measures. Biomarkers are also a, a, a very significant point in uh, research, as well as mycotoxins, but biomarkers of exposure. Uh, we need some special laboratory techniques there, but it's a, it's a very promising also field uh, as it got uh, issues like uh, quick diagnostics, like from blood stains and uh, um, these uh, novel techniques. So things are uh, going better and faster this, towards this diagnosing and mitig mitigation um, uh, issues. Gotcha. Well, I believe that's all the time we have. So thank you again for coming on the show and sharing all your research with us. Thank you so much, uh, Sustain. And uh, I hope... We gave, we gave it a bit of insight on bit highlighting this uh, significant issue uh, globally for the shrine production. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, mycotoxins are definitely not going away anytime soon. Now that you mentioned it, uh, Sustain, and uh, not to forget that the issue of climate change uh, can affect uh, our future view of the issue of mycotoxins since uh, data from the research. Uh, uh, suggest that uh, most probably this issue of climate change may affect and uh, increase uh, problems with us in grains uh, worldwide. So we should have an eye on that. Uh, I couldn't agree more that uh, microbiologists are not going to go away very in the near future. So thanks so much. So thank you and thank you to everyone else for listening to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt podcast. Please visit us at swanutritionblackbelt.com and don't forget to subscribe to our podcast channel so you won't miss out on the next episode. See you next week.